anxiety. You don't want to be like this gentleman next time you will be presenting. You want to show up with confidence and courage for your next presentation. Now, here is what you must know. It is common for both experienced and beginning speakers to be anxious about giving a speech. The difference is that the experienced speaker knows how to control this anxiety and use it to enhance their speech. How do experienced speakers control anxiety and use it to their advantage? Anyone to help us with that? Anyone to tell us how they use anxiety to help them over, to help them deliver their speech with ease and excellence? Anyone? It is common for both experience, yeah? Is this Levona? Do you have anyone that would like to contribute? Can I contribute, um, DTM? Yes, please. I am thinking just to prepare well uh, helps a bit in uh, helping with anxiety. Adequate preparation, yes. Thank you for that. Let's take note of these responses that will be given. Anybody else? We've got adequate preparation. Read. How? Do you overcome anxiety before you deliver your speech? Just to add to what uh, the DTM Dorothy said, it, preparation and knowing the material, being very familiar with the material that you are going to deliver. Yes, please. And rehearse. No Great, thank you. Thank you for that. Can we have one more? Dorothy, is that your legacy hand or it's a new hand to contribute? Sorry, that must be a legacy hand. <laughs> okay. Can we have one more, please? Hello, John. Yes, please. I think the other one, it will be to control one's breathing. Control one's breathing. Thank you. So we've got three responses so far on what experienced speakers do to overcome anxiety. Adequate preparation, knowing your material, and controlling of your breathing. Thank you for those contributions and uh, they're very valid. I hope people have taken note. The other things that we must know about anxiety is what Soren Kierkegaard said is, anxiety is the dizziness of freedom. And we had Epictetus who said, man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxieties about real problems. Most of the things that we are anxious about tend to happen in our minds. It is therefore important that we take control of our minds and the resources that we can use to take control of our mind are resources that are within our control. 
These are resources that are within us. We can use the resources within us to actually overcome anxiety. To overcome anxiety, we must know its cause. What is the cause of our anxiety? And what are the symptoms of anxiety? I would like us to quickly look at what triggers anxiety. What triggers are there for anxiety to come up? And what are the symptoms? I would like us to start with the triggers before we can look at the symptoms. I would like people to share the triggers of anxiety. In your own life, what causes you anxiety? What causes you anxiety? I'll give these examples. And if there is anybody that would like to add, we'll be happy to add to the list. We'll be happy to add to the list of triggers of anxiety. We have new and unknown situations as triggers of anxiety. We have risking failure. Nobody wants to fail. So in situations where we are feeling like we are going to fail, we tend to feel anxious. Those situations are going to trigger feelings of anxiety, potential for appearing foolish or potential for being embarrassed is another trigger for anxiety possibility of boring the audience. There are some people that naturally think that they are boring. When you are not adequately prepared, you will feel that your audience is going to be bored with your presentation. And that is going to cause you anxiety. Anybody else that can share some triggers of anxiety. There are some listed in the chart. Self-doubt, not having control of the situation, yes. Fear, feeling under pressure, past failures, yeah, not having control. Low self-esteem, right? I hope people are taking note of these. Triggers sometimes become by becoming more aware of the triggers that cause anxiety, we empower ourselves with the ability to actually overcome anxiety. Let's move beyond the triggers and look at the symptoms, the symptoms of anxiety. Some people mention some of the symptoms of anxiety when we are just starting. Let's explore some of the symptoms of anxiety some more. What are some of the symptoms of anxiety? Sweaty palms. Sweaty palms, yes, sweaty palms. Anybody else? Increased heartbeat. Increased heartbeat, yes. Your mind Some going more. blank. Pardon? Your mind going blank and forgetting what you're about to say. Your mind going blank and forgetting what you are about to say. Can we have one more?
Okay, let me just demonstrate some more. Another one is uh, stuttering. Stuttering. Thank you for your contributions. The symptoms of anxiety, some of them are physiological, some are psychological, and others manifest in behavior at the body level, at the thought level, and in our actions. You can just quickly peep on what is listed there. Difficulty sleeping. When you have a big presentation, sometimes you even fail to sleep because you have not taken the time to address the cause of the anxiety. You have not taken the time to adequately Prepare. Ralph Smedley said, the unprepared speaker has the right to be afraid. It's only the unprepared speaker who has the right to be afraid. The most perverse symptoms, I believe, are the ones that are at the mind level, the psychological symptoms. Your mind goes blank. What do you do in those moments when your mind goes blank, when you have difficulty concentrating, when you are indecisive, constant comparison, when you're comparing yourself with other people? All that is going to cause you anxiety. So you don't want to be comparing yourself with others. You want to focus on the message that you will be delivering. So those are the symptoms of anxiety, which manifest themselves in different ways. There are more that have been listed here, talking fast, heart pounding, shaking hands, all those are symptoms of anxiety. So what can you do to overcome this anxiety? One of the researches that have been done on anxiety was done by Dr. Susan David. Dr. Susan David, if you want to learn more on how you can overcome anxiety, you can actually look up her work on anxiety. I find it very compelling. And one of the suggestions from the research is looking and going beyond the obvious, going beyond what is obvious. Now, what does this mean? What does going beyond the obvious mean? Going beyond the obvious to identify exactly what you are feeling with a particular attention to feeling anxious, anxiety. By going beyond the obvious, what we mean is you want to find out what is causing you that anxiety. The umbrella emotion is anxiety, you're feeling anxious. But at the granular level, what's really happening? Is it because you are afraid? If you are afraid, what is really causing you to be afraid? It is said that by going beyond the emotion and naming the cause, you actually begin to take away the power of that emotion that is causing you anxiety. And you begin to gain the confidence to approach your speaking situations and deliver your presentation. Going beyond the obvious. Let's just look at these emotions that are listed as well as their granular terms. Their granular terms tend to speak to what is actually causing you to be angry or to be sad, to be anxious, to feel hurt, embarrassed, 
or happy. In terms of anxiety there we have, the umbrella emotion is anxious. The cause could be because you are afraid, you are stressed, you're feeling vulnerable, you're feeling confused, you're feeling bewildered, you are worried, you're cautious, or you're simply nervous. Any questions so far on what we've covered or around going beyond the obvious? Any experiences that you've encountered where you had to go beyond the obvious to overcome your anxiety or to overcome your anger or sadness? Your comments or contributions or questions around going beyond the obvious. Anyone? Questions, do you need more clarity? Do you understand? Is this something that you can apply to address your anxiety or any other emotion that you may be feeling? I think the list is pretty comprehensive and uh, has been very informative. Okay, it's clear. All right, thank you. So this is one method that you can use to help you overcome anxiety, to help you understand why you're feeling embarrassed, to help you understand why you're feeling happy, to help you understand why you are feeling angry. Now let's, let's move beyond and look at using the total person paradigm to overcome anxiety. I came across the total person paradigm in an effort to, in an effort to understand the causes of anxiety and how best we can use the resources within us to help us show up with confidence, show up with excellence, and deliver our presentations with power. This is based on the work that was done by Dr. Stephen Covey, and it's found, some of it is found in the book, The Eighth Habit, Using the Total Person Paradigm to Overcome Anxiety. So I'm very excited about this model because you can apply it in different aspects of your life. It can be in your leadership, it can be in public speaking, and generally in your personal development. In our case, we are talking about how we can overcome speaker anxiety. And the total person paradigm is here to address that challenge using the mind, the body, the heart, and the spirit as tools to help us overcome anxiety. We were told that one way you can overcome anxiety is by adequate preparation. So how do you prepare adequately. At the mind level, you prepare adequately by feeding your mind with the right content, with the right information, with the right knowledge of the subject matter that you will be addressing. When you feed yourself intellectually, you give yourself authority. You empower yourself with the right knowledge and content that you will be 
delivering. So that's what it means to be prepared. That's what it means to prepare adequately for your presentation. You have to prepare yourself at the mind level. At the body level, you also want to show up. You also want to show up feeling good about yourself, feeling fit, feeling healthy, and ready to deliver. You therefore have to prepare your body for your presentation. The body is the means by which you deliver your presentation. So it therefore has to be fit enough to serve you for that purpose. And beyond that, we have the heart. And at the heart level, the heart level, this is speaking to how passionate are you about the subject matter that you will be talking about? How passionate are you about the subject matter? Do you love the subject that you'll be speaking about? Are you passionate enough? Are you enthusiastic enough as you prepare to deliver? It is important that you pick subjects that you are actually passionate about. That is what is going to give you the right enthusiasm and the right attitude when you show up to deliver your speech. At the spirit level, here we are speaking about what do you really believe? Do you believe that you are the person who is capable of succeeding with your delivery, with your speech? Are you going to achieve your objectives? At the spirit level, we are speaking to your belief system. Do you believe that you will actually deliver? So at this point, I just, I just want people to reflect briefly on the mind, body, heart, and spirit, and how it can actually help you to overcome anxiety. Because when you prepare at the mind level, at the body level, at the heart level, and at the spirit level, you become capable of showing up with full presence and power to deliver your speech and you will not be anxious. Any thoughts, any comments around the total person paradigm when it comes to overcoming anxiety? I would like to get your comments and your thoughts. Johan, just um, I think I think the part of the spirit where you speak about uh, do you believe that you are the right vessel for the message really resonated for me because that is where a lot of the anxiety comes in when you are uncertain of yourself and therefore then the, the everything else begins to fall apart your body your mind your heartbeat races and. That's my takeaway. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Novan to Levona, for your comment. Anybody else around uh, the old, the total person paradigm and what we've covered so far? Questions, contributions. Okay, Otis is saying it's a useful tool to overcome anxiety. Is this something that you can, if, if you've been facing anxiety in the past, is this a model that you can actually apply? having learned what you've learned so far, or what would be your contributions?
let me just demonstrate how this can actually be broken down, or how it was broken down. So on one hand, you have the total person paradigm that I introduced to you earlier with the body, mind, heart, and spirit. So beyond the, the total, the, the four aspects of an individual, there are also needs. You have to address these needs of the whole person in order for you to be fulfilled, in order for you to address those anxiety issues. The body has to live, you have to be alive. The body has to be exercised. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about preparing the body for those important moments. Four needs to live, to learn, to love, to leave a legacy. I want you to see how the whole person paradigm is evolving in terms of the four needs that is to live. And beyond that, you will see that there are the four intelligences or capacities. Physical intelligence basically means fitness or health, mental intelligence arising from what you learn, the heart, emotional intelligence, what you are passionate about, or what you love. And in terms of spirit, you think about spiritual intelligence, the legacy that you want to leave, what you believe in. So thinking about the total person paradigm in this way, allows you to just think beyond that moment when you have to make that presentation or speech. It is more than that. And it is important that we start thinking about delivering speeches beyond the moment when we are actually doing it. We need to have a bigger vision of why we are doing what we are doing. You will see that vision is an extension of the mind. You will also see that passion is an extension of the heart from the total person paradigm. You will also see that spirit or conscience is that conscience is an extension of the spirit as we speak about the total person paradigm. So the body has to be disciplined through exercise. You want to be fit enough to show up with full presence and power for that presentation. And you will not have anxiety as you show up. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the total person paradigm broken down. Do we have any questions, colleagues, or contributions around what we've spoken about before we close? So you can look at this breakdown and think of ways that you can apply this into your own life. Thank you very much, Johan. That was a very informative uh, discussion. And uh, as you can see, there's a countdown to, for people to return to the main room. I hope everybody enjoyed it and comments are welcome on the chat. And if you need more information, please put your email there. Thank you. Thank you, Novantu. All right, thank you everybody for joining. We'll see you in the main room. I really appreciate you making the time to listen and learn through this presentation. Thank you.